Hello, I'm David Chester with 98.9, brought to you by interest.co.nz. This week, get everything you need to know in 90 seconds at 9 o'clock, with news of renewed efforts to get the Trans-Pacific Partnership ratified again. At the upcoming APEC meeting in Vietnam, Japan and Australia are making a new push to get the TPPA over the line without the US. New Zealand has defaulted its influence at this meeting, but if the effort is successful, we stand to benefit greatly. And don't forget, the General Secretary of APEC is Alan Bollard. And it is instructive that the US President left Japan for the meeting empty-handed on trade. The chances of a TPPA 11? Probably better than 50-50. The chances of the new government signing up anyway are high. The head of the New York Fed has cautioned Congress and the White House on the dangers of rolling back financial sector regulations that were put in place to shore up the banking sector after the GFC. But, as if to acknowledge they won't listen, he also announced he's quitting the post. It's an unexpected, unexplained early retirement. China has announced that it had a current account surplus of $37 billion in the September quarter, taking its total 2017 current account surplus to $106 billion. But in its capital account, the 2017 surplus was just $1.8 billion. These numbers are far, far less than its goods trade surplus because China runs large services deficits and large capital account deficits. Some strident Western politicians have risen to power misrepresenting this data. Populism allows shouters to ignore inconvenient facts. In staying in China, reports are emerging that the major Western credit rating agencies are now close to approval to operate and rate domestic Chinese corporate bonds. The Chinese system has failed, with almost half of all such issuance now rated AAA by local rating agencies. The situation has zero credibility, and the Chinese know it. And they know the situation is dangerous for them. A change of policy has been signalled by the People's Bank of China and will be a huge coup for S&P, Moody's and Fitch. But it will come with intense pressures from Beijing. We will know how they handle those pressures with how they rate Chinese sovereign bonds. Currently they're rated A+, with a negative outlook. And the recently released Paradise Papers show that HSBC threatened to sue ANZ for allegedly handing over customer details to the Australian Tax Office without telling their tax cheating clients first. In New York, the US Treasury 10-year yield is down one basis point today to 2.32%. And the price of crude oil has jumped by more than $1.50 and are now just over $57 a barrel, while the Brent benchmark is just under $64 a barrel. And inside a coup of sorts in Saudi Arabia, plus instability in Venezuela, are both adding risk premiums to crude oil prices. And the price of gold is unchanged at $1,269 an ounce. And the Bitcoin price is now at $7,093, down 4% on the day. The Kiwi dollar is a little changed today. We are now just under 69.1 US cents. And on the cross rates, we're at 90 Aussie cents and against the euro, 59.6 euro cents. That puts the TWI still at 72.5. I'm David Chaston. That was 90 at 9, brought to you by interest.co.nz.